everyone and welcome to the Homepage Network, I'm Lauren Gooch. November is National Adoption Month and our Homepage Vice President, Sarah Vogt, is here to share her heart and her experience with adoption. Thanks, Lauren. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. The heart of God is to protect those in our society that need our love and support. John and I have two beautiful daughters through the journey of adoption. The paperwork pregnancy felt as real to me as when I carried our son in my womb. Our daughters, Johanna and Juliana, are now joint heirs with our son Regis in the Vogt family. If you're thinking about adopting and would like more details about our adoption story, please click on the link in the writing with this broadcast. When we come back, we'll speak with two people who work to find permanency for children in care and what National Adoption Month means to them. Stay with us. Welcome back, and thank you for supporting our homepage family of advertisers. I'm joined now by McKenna Chrisman and Trisha Tanner. Welcome, ladies. Hello, thank you. What does CASA stand for, and how do you help the community? Yes, yeah, so um, Tiger County CASA, um, the CASA aspect stands for Court Appointed Special Advocate. So what that means is we provide a community member who volunteers to um, become trained and be an advocate for a child who is in care of the county um, and advocate for them during their time in dependency court. So they're there to um, be their voice in court and the eyes and ears for them. And why is this something that you're so passionate about? Um, I'm very passionate about this just because I, you know, I think children are already having a really hard time going through the system. Um, you know, court is a really hard thing to go through. It's tough. It's tough for adults, let alone children. Um, so to be there and provide that extra support um, and being that voice for the child is very important during that time for them and to be sure that all their wishes and needs are met. And truly just being that support for them. You know, some children might not always have that support system going through this time, so we can always be that constant person for them. Um, and that's just, you know, what, I, what really kind of hits home for me is being there for them. And Trisha, what is your role in this process? So my role is, um, as the placement liaison, I am basically the speaking voice between the court system and Tioga County Children and Youth Services. So what I do as part of the placement liaison is I am the foster care supervisor. So I do foster care or I do supervise um, two ladies underneath me who are the foster care caseworkers. And during that time, um, we are very well involved with the children that come into the custody of um, children and youth here in Tioga County. So my goal as a placement liaison or the foster care supervisor is being able to provide the permanency for these kids. So when we get a child that's in care, that comes into care for us, we will look at all of our foster homes and we usually will go down the list and be like, would you be um, able to take in a child that's three? Will you be able to take in a child that has um, ADHD? You know, we, we try to get all of the background information that we can on these kids so that we can provide our foster parents with all the information so that we don't just have a child show up on their door and they have nothing, you know, they know nothing about this child. Mm -hmm. So we typically look at the list of all of our foster parents and try to decide who would be the best fit for this kid. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our kids come in and they're very scared. They have no idea, you know, the difference between their home and what they're about to go into. It's very scary for them. And we do have um, some supports out there that we 
we provide to our foster parents, but we provide to the children as well. We try to do what we can to make it an easier transition. Um, we do have visitation with the parents. Um, that's all something that we, we try to disclose to the foster parents as we're recruiting them because we want to make sure that they understand that the number one goal is always reunification with the parents, but this could possibly end up being a permanent option. So would you be willing to be a permanent support for them? Yep. So we just try um, really hard to give any kind of services that we have in our county to be able to provide the foster parents, the kids, the parents, um, even our staff, what you know kind of services we can give them to help them through this whole process. Mm -hmm. And at the end, um, I actually have an adoption coming up tomorrow for a child. And, you know, this, this happens. Um, we've had, I think by the end of the year, we might have 10 adoptions going through this year. And that's very big for us because a lot of these kids, we've seen them go through trauma and home after home after home, because, you know, all these kids have these behaviors sometimes when they go through this, which is understandable, but when they find their forever home, that's when we are rewarded knowing that that kiddo, is loved, cared for, and will be. Yep. Now for those who are unable to adopt, what other ways can our community get involved? Um, other ways to get involved um, and just, you know, kind of going off of what Trisha said, um, CASA is really kind of that support for the county in a sense, you know, when these children are going through that time, you know, we want to be there to be their support during that time and help them reach that permanency of, you know, what's best for them. So um, really what's the most helpful for us, um, Giving Tuesday is coming up, it's December 1st. Um, so if you're not able to volunteer your time and it's just not a right time for you, um, we would really appreciate any types of donations. Um, your donations can actually help us um, prepare training materials, get advocates trained and through the training and uh, matched with a child and start working with that child right away. So that way they've got somebody there for them and helping them through this time. Um, for donations, you can actually check out the Tioga County CASA Facebook page or the impact page. I will be posting that we'll have the donation link and just kind of how to go about that. We would really, really appreciate any type of donation towards that. So that way we can really help provide these children advocates and give those extra supports during this time and um, making sure they just have all resources they, that, that are available to them. And what's the best way for our audience to contact you? Um, for contacting CASA, it's through our Facebook page, again, Tioga County CASA. Uh, I do have a phone number. It's 570-948-2334. Um, and I'm very responsive to either or, so it doesn't matter. Whatever is easiest for everybody. Wonderful. Well, thank you both so much for all that you do for our community. Thank, thank you. you so much. And thank you for joining us today on the Homepage Network. It's the time of Thanksgiving, and Akiko's Floral Arts has just what you need for beautiful gifts and decorating. Gifting of a floral arrangement with delivery takes away all the worries of what to get. It's the solution to that last minute gift. And Akiko's always makes the personal touch easy and stress free. Pick up your gift, flowers, or centerpiece, and bring it to that special event, function, or family get together yourself. Akiko's, helping you express your love and care no matter what the occasion. Akiko's, always there for you.